Remember when I clipped my nails and you're like, what is that smell? I think I have rotting oh toes. How are you supposed to wash your feet in the shower without tipping over and taking out the shower curtain? So I'm supposed to stand there and then lift a hoof. Yep. I'm probably cut my hand on my jagged toenails <laughs> while I do it and then just put my leg back down and not fall. Who's doing that? Trekking heavier traveling life. There's one thing that's right wherever I go. That's where I am. Mm. All right. Hey, everybody. Are we recording? We're good, yeah. Oh, we'll leave that part in. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Welcome to This Week in Zoltan. I did not check what episode this is, so, you know, it's the one. It's the one that's going on right now. Uh, this is a special post Super Bowl edition, even though it's going to come out a week later. Uh, but before we get cooking, how about I plug the Safe Journal, huh? Huh? Uh -huh. I've been, yeah, get, get a clap going in there. The Safe Journal, the number one journal in all of the internet. Did you know that? We just got that in. Uh, uh, Jeff Bezos sent us a tweet and they said, You are the number one journal in all, all of the internet. Suck on that. Other journals, <laughs> and he's going to knock it off, and he's doing safe, safe, safe journals. Wait, he's, already, yeah. <laughs> he's using your data. Yeah, he's going to somehow try to monetize your thoughts. Yeah, uh, wasn't that in the movie where they tried to like put your memories behind a paywall? It was uh, uh, the Nick Cage movie we watched, oh, yeah. Dream Scenario, mm. where at the end they like put your memories behind a paywall, and then now there's an ad playing before you can see your memory. I think that's how it was. Either that or that was a Stavros joke. No, that was it. That was it. I think that was it. Anyway, uh, the Safe Journal, safejournal.co, uh, promo code Zoltan for 25% off. And if you do the promo code, I read you a handwritten note. And I've gotten, last last night I wrote three of them. And I got, uh, you're getting me the carpal tunnel. So break this right hand off by getting yourself a Safe Journal, 25% off if you use Zoltan at checkout. And I will write you a handwritten note. Uh, this journal is great if you're brand new to journaling or if you're a seasoned journaler. Uh, get to know yourself. That's what I've, I've gotten to know, that I have social anxiety with everybody. And I wouldn't have known that from journaling. I would have just thought, no, I always just try to leave conversations normally, because that's a normal part of having conversations with people. How the hell do I get out of these? But thanks to the Safe Journal, where you get to talk to yourself without getting weird looks on the subway, I found out I have social anxiety with everybody. Isn't that something good to learn about yourself? It really is. It's get to know yourself more than just intimately. You know what I mean? Everyone always thinks, oh, get to know yourself. Oh, light some candles, lock the door, get some lube. That's not what I'm talking about. Lube your mind and your soul with the safe journal, your own words. Zoltana, check out 25% off. Blah, blah, blah. I send you a note. <laughs> How'd you like that? <laughs> you like? It was good. That felt like I was selling a drug. It's weird that you get carpal tunnels by just writing, thanks, Zoltan. Three, I write three times. <laughs> you know, he writes a lot more than that. <laughs> I write a lot. And I try to make them different, but at the same time, I don't know these people, you know? And uh, like last night I was writing, or the other night I was writing one during the Super Bowl, and I just wrote something that I ended up tweeting. I, I just wrote, like, because did you watch the, you know, the Uber Eats ad? They hired every celebrity known to man. And I was like, wow, you, Uber Eats makes a lot of money by not paying its drivers that they hired every celebrity in Hollywood to be in their, Bro. to be in their Super Bowl ad. Like, how'd you get everybody? They reunited friends. They got, like, I don't even remember the rest of the celebrities, but they got everybody. They got everybody that wasn't tied down or dead. And then I'm sure like Uber drivers, specifically the ones that live in New York that are the migrants on the Vespa scooters, risking their life in the snow with no helmet, running over old ladies, riding on the sidewalks, going on the freeway to deliver a sandwich. Uh, I'm sure they were watching that going, man, they got, I wonder how much Jennifer Aniston got paid. <laughs> I think every written script was something, 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 and then the words, poof, in comes celebrity. Because every one of them was just like a smoke ball and a celebrity showed up. Like, they just had AI wrote this whole thing? I think it was trash. I think it, all, of, all of them were really bad. Uh, all of them were really, the only one I liked was the Arnold one, where he couldn't say neighbor. Didn't like that one at all. You didn't like it? 40 years too late. <laughs> We've all this. Sorry. Also, I don't trust a company that does spends that much money and their whole job is to protect you. Oh, well, yeah. Like when I see a bank that has like a coffee shop 
or like a bank with like 5,000 flat screens. Oh, I'm like, that's what are you doing good. with my money? Yeah. <laughs> Don't trust you. That's not good. <laughs> no. That's the, for the $12 a month bank fees. Yeah. That's what they're doing with that. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I well, First of all, the Super Bowl, this is the first Super Bowl that I watched where I felt embarrassed to be an American. It was a little much. Not with the patriotism. That's not the part that gets me. It's just too much of everything. It's everything. You know that movie, Everything All at Once? Blah, blah, blah. Sure. That's how the Super Bowl feels. Like, everything's too fast-paced. There's nine national anthems. There's, like, the two patriotic songs that aren't the national anthem. Then the national anthem. Then here comes the marching band from the military. Then they got a special needs kid to bring out the football that they're going to play with. Then they got these, uh, they had the football team from Hawaii. Their state burned down, so they're coming out to do the coin toss. And you're like, this is too much. The Super Bowl feels like the participation trophy for America, where, like, at the end, one team wins the championship, but really, everyone gets their screen time. Everybody. Like, I get why the terrorists don't like us. I don't agree with them, but if I watch the Super Bowl, I'm like, oh, oh. It's, it, the Super Bowl feels like an uncomfortable family photo of a rich family where you all, all show up with the white pants and the white, and then you're in the yard with the white dog, and you're like, I don't like the way this makes me feel. And the girlfriend who's clearly on, on her way out, who hasn't been told that they're breaking up yet, <laughs> is wearing an orange sweater for some reason because they forgot, they forgot she was going to be in the picture. Yeah. <laughs> And they kept cutting to her during the game. Her name's Taylor Swift. That's an unfortunate, uh, <laughs> real thing that happened to me. Is that, is that true? Oh, you were in the. Uh, he was in a family photo, and you didn't know you were on the way out. No, she. My ex didn't know she was on the way out. <laughs> oh, no. and, well, she did, and she was just like, "Please don't put me in this photo," because we were like trying to get things work things out, and then we, we both knew it wasn't going to happen. My mom kept being like, "Get her in, get her in." <laughs> There's still the photo in my parents' house where she's just like, she, she just keeps looking at the camera like. Really? <laughs> I think like two days later it was over. It was off. It was a good time. It was before they got the prince out. Yeah, yeah. So what they, I'm trying to say is, is that I was dating Taylor Swift. That was the whole point of that. Listen, I, well, congratulations, Thank first you. of yeah, all. It was a good time. Uh, please tell us which song is the one about you. All of them. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> How did it feel from your end? Because we watched the Super Bowl together. You don't care mm -hmm. about football. Mm -hmm. But the game felt like it went quickly mm -hmm. compared to most football games that I watch. I mean, speak for yourself. It game lasted forever for me <laughs> oh she was so sad when she was like what's overtime <laughs> well this is the first overtime <laughs> yeah, yeah and i was like oh and then the ref goes we are now starting a new game and i was like new game <laughs> like the whole thing <laughs> uh, that's good and i had this moment where like i agree with you it just felt like a lot and i was like i wonder if the aliens are watching this right now they're not impressed this is too much. Yeah. I imagine the judgment they yeah. come by and mm -hmm. they just see us doing like, it's essentially a group dance. <laughs> like it, it, the, the, uh, the, the flyover goes by and they're like, oh, really? You're still using combustion? Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, watching the Super Bowl is kind of like watching a flash mob where at this point, like when a flash mob happens, you just roll your eyes and you're like, oh, what are we doing here? Is this really what we are? Is this really who we are? It's just too much everything. And the, and the commercials, I like the Arnold commercial. I like the one that was just like, be nice, and it was paid for by Jesus RS or something. He is, what was that? It was like, it was, it was like all these fast-paced commercials, and then there would be a commercial like, hey, quit being mean to each other. You know, Jesus washed people's feet. And you're like, uh, okay. And then he is he is real dot com or something. Something. It was Jesus didn't hate. He washed feet. Uh -huh. I'm like, which this is just the most sexy commercial. <laughs> They find, found a way to just put people's feet on the screen. Like, this was definitely done yeah. on purpose. Listen, if you're, uh, if the only two options is you hating me or washing my feet, I'm going to go with the hate. Hate me up, Stay dude. the hell away from my feet. <laughs> How about you? You don't like your feet touched. By strangers, someone coming in, putting their fingers between your toes, doing that yeah. thing. It's got to be a specific technique. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you like the mid-arch <laughs> thumb roll. That's what she likes. And don't come in too hot with that, because she'll start kicking like a mule. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have I come in and you're like, <laughs> I'm like whoa. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, there it is. I, <laughs> everyone likes a specific foot rub. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm uh, I don't like my feet really touched. I don't like. I get uncomfortable with that. 
because then they start bending the toes back and forth. You know what creeps yeah, me right. out? Like when the joints go back like that. Mm -hmm. Like you do that sometimes. Sometimes you'll push your finger and it goes pop, 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 and it arcs backwards, mm -hmm. and it makes my skin crawl. I absolutely hate that. I did like the fact that halfway through those commercials, I realized that they were actually advertising to current religious people. Like they weren't trying to get me involved. They were just <laughs> like, hey, everyone that's already here, just so you know, like let's, let's not hate so much. Because I feel like they're the ones that do the most of that. <laughs> And they use that book to hate with. And it's like, hey, guys, j -j 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 -j. Not, no, no, that's not what we do here. I think you're missing. Yeah. Somehow uh, religion and patriotism got jammed together. Yeah. And then the, they're like, well, uh, religion doesn't let you hate. But I think patriotism does. For sure. So if we mix some patriotism into my love of Jesus, maybe I can start hating these people that uh, aren't from here. Like, love everybody. That's a citizen. Yeah, I yeah. think that's I think that's what Jesus initially meant in his Bible. Love everybody. Jesus washed the feet of those who came here legally. <laughs> <laughs> he checked everyone's voting cards Le legal. before he washed their feet. He goes, "Can I see that voting card?" Oh, there we go. Learn more at legalfeet.com. <laughs> <laughs> Do a Trump thing like, "We love legal feet." <laughs> love legal. <laughs> love feet. Illegal feet are ruining this country, <laughs> stamping around with their calloused heels. They wash their feet after they cross the border illegally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if, uh, I think Jesus came around at the right time, because I don't think he could make, get much traction today. I'm sure, I mean, look, if he's tried, it's never worked. Right. No one's going to believe him. Well, now or if... Or her. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that, that. Is that a real argument if Jesus was a girl? <laughs> her name was Jesusa. That was, that was Jesus' name. Uh, the, uh, yeah, that wouldn't work today because for Jesus to come back now, he would have to film himself washing homeless people's feet and then put it on line and hope that got the right amount of traction. Yeah. But then it would get the love and the hate, like when Mr. Beast gave all those blind people sight, mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, but you made a bunch of money, but yeah, you're reusing your money to do the thing. Yeah. And so it's like, you videotape and it kind of takes the shine of your charity away. A little bit, but also like, you're not just like, you, hey, homeless person, you want $2 or give double and give it to the next home? It's not like, it's, it's like huge it's like things that he's doing. Yeah. Like there's a, the Jewish culture is like mitzvah. You okay. familiar with that? No. Where I've heard like, the word, but I don't know what it means. The highest level of mitzvah is you do something good for somebody else or for other people and you don't take credit for it. That's like the uh, ultimate level of doing And that's like what they want, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, yeah. I think the, the modern thing, it's like, oh, I I built, I gave water to three three countries that didn't have water. And it's like, yeah, boo, you filmed it. Like, okay. But they, they're <laughs> drinking though. Yeah. You think they care? <laughs> no. They're drinking clean water for crying out loud. <laughs> I'm pissed. That, uh, see, you're mad. I'm a, I, I'm a Mr. Beast sympathizer. I like, I, like, I like what he does. Emma's a big fan of Mr. Beast. Meh. You don't think? You I, always... I watch his videos because they're always in my face, but... I, I, uh, the only, my only knock on him is the video editing style, which everybody does, which is more a me getting old thing, which yeah. is also why I didn't enjoy the Super Bowl commercials. It's a little slap choppy, right? It's too fast. Yeah, yeah. It's bang, bang, bang. And I'm like, what just happened? It's, it was the same thing of why I didn't like Vine, where I couldn't tell when one hacky joke stopped and the next one started. Sure. And then they would just loop it. And I'm like, what am I watching? It feels like I'm watching like my brain defragment. Yeah, a little bit. And I can't keep up with it. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that way? Yeah, a little bit. Like everything's. Uh, who's the other YouTuber you showed me? He's very famous, Joe Dombrowski or some uh, D Dabrowitz. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, he just does a bunch of crazy crap. Yeah, I feel like they all but adopted that's, that. Yeah. yeah, that style of fast, fast, fast. Yeah, not for me. Not for me. My brain doesn't compute at that frame rate. I'm I'm a lot slower. Just tell me. Just be good. Mm -hmm. Just make a good commercial. Make it funny. Remember my favorite Super Bowl commercial? Terry Tate office linebacker. Yeah. From 2000, they did it. Reebok did an ad where like they put a crazy linebacker in an office, and he's just tackling the crap out of people. Like he'd go into the break room, and this guy finished the coffee and just left. And he go, he comes in, woo! You finish the Joe, you make some mo, and then he chases him and tackles him. He would just tackle the crap out of all <laughs> these office people. It was wonderful. Yeah, I just the 
all all fun, no celebrity. Yes. I mean, it's kind of celebrity, but like football celebrity. You know? Yeah, no, that actor yeah. wasn't a real football player. Or he like, wasn't? he wasn't famous. Oh. Yeah, he got, I think he got, Terry Tate wasn't a real player. Oh, he was an actor. Yeah, and he just came in and tackled the crap out of these office folk. It was wonderful. Yeah. And, you know, like, make stuff like that. Every it was just every celebrity doing every weird thing. Like, isn't it weird? Brad Pitt's here. Like, not really, because I just watched a hundred commercials <laughs> where weird celebrities would pop up. I would love to see Terry Tate in a comeback commercial where he's just tackling people in an office and then starts taking their shoes off. <laughs> Don't ask questions. <laughs> We're cleaning you up, bud. <laughs> Dude, if you rub someone's feet now, <laughs> you're gonna get canceled. No, no, no I'm Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like Jesus. What would Jesus do? He'd wash feet. <laughs> oh man. Could you imagine someone in an office that had like the Jesus Jesus name tag just coming in to rub your feet and you're like, dude, I'm doing I'm doing what I'm s I don't know. Didn't you read the book? This is a good thing. <laughs> it's in the book, man. <laughs> it's in the book. This is like the nicest thing you could do for someone is wash someone's feet. I would love it if they made a movie out of the Bible. It's like the whole thing. Oh, from beginning to end? Beginning to end. Make a movie. Ooh. Yeah, I don't even... I've never read the Bible, so I don't... Where is this? Tough. What's the opening scene? <laughs> uh, it's not the Big Bang, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't start with an explosion. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with a close-up on dinosaur bones, and then they pan out, and Jesus is washing someone's feet. I think that's how it starts. Oh, it's obviously... It's Genesis 1... One, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Obviously, that's the opening of the Bible. <laughs> that's that pretty cool. Pretty, pretty Dude, if like a Marvel, like Marvel Studios did that, it would just be like this white, like big bearded, whatever we imagine God to be. Just, you know, like a powdered wig or whatever. And then just pointing and then a lightning bolt comes out and like, there's earth. <laughs> there's a tree. There's whatever. Avalanche. It's just Oprah. You get a tree. <laughs> you get a squirrel. You get a mouse. What? You're just talking to the earth. Oh my God, we saw a dead rat yesterday. Oh no. That made us sad. Yeah. You know those spikes that they put. That they put rats on and sell them for food? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I mean, this could have been. But you know those spikes they use to keep birds away? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess, I don't know how this happened, but we're going to our apartment as we open the door to our building. Down there, there's the spike with the, and there's just a rat on the spikes, and it's not doing good. It's definitely impaled on there, and I'm like, how'd you even end up in that situation? You know they're doing rat, rat tourism is a big thing now? Rat tourism? Rat tourism. What? You Why would take, anyone want to do that? I mean, apparently it's, according to The Guardian, it's been booming. This is an article from 2003, September, so recently. Rat tourism has become the latest multi-experience trend in the city, besieged by infestations. Oh Do you think God. people take those tours to figure out where not to move into? Maybe, but it also just kind of feels like one of those things that they just so they can tell people they did it. Yeah, that's you know? disgusting. So they, they just, like know where all the rat nests are. I guess. I feel like though it could be like, hey, meet the tour wherever. <laughs> you can start that tour anywhere. <laughs> Oh, we're going to head to this corner? There's a rat. All right. Anyone questions? <laughs> we heard a rat in the walls. Yeah. Did we talk about that last time? I don't think so. Don't yeah, know. you sent me a video. I was on the road somewhere, mm -hmm. and you're like, I'm pretty sure there's a rat in the wall. I heard a squeak, and then both of our cats, have, you just sent mm -hmm. me a video of both of our cats looking at one spot at the wall, oh and God. they were very intrigued, and I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that. That's not good. I would like to move, please. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's about over. This is your first apartment in New York, though, right? Yeah, <coughs> yeah we went for... You'll leave. You, just leave eventually, yeah. We went for pre-war, which is... Yeah. I, I think... You know what it is when you pick a pre-war building? You go for the aesthetics. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, that's so cool. High ceilings, big crown molding around the windows, hardwood floors... They blast heat through the wall that you don't get to regulate at all. And uh, 73,000 layers of lead paint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Her eczema is going off the rails. So bad. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, me, I'm just aging. That's what I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> like, like my, <laughs> my, uh, my eczema has been crow's feet and dark circles <laughs> under my eyes. This eye. place is slowly killing us. You know what's so funny is I'm surprised that this city is aging us because, and I shouldn't be because one of the things I noticed when we came here is how miserable everyone Everybody looked mm -hmm. like everyone looked like their face had been through a freezer. Like they just look at their yeah, face yeah. mushed in a freezer and it's just kind of gray and be worn, worn, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. And uh, I wasn't used to that. I was like, oh, they must be. I just, I just thought everyone in the city was going through a breakup. <laughs> like every, that's what everyone kind of looks like. Everyone looks like they were just broken up with, 
and they're just like, I don't know about my life, and they're just kind of walking through, and then that's what we look like now. Kind of. Not you. You still look beautiful. But me. Jesus, dude. I think it's because you are, you're constantly, like, breaking up with reality. Like, every day. Yeah. You, something happens. You're like, I can't. I just, I'm not deal, I don't want to deal with that ever again. There was a lady on the train yesterday. I was the only one on the train with her. And she just looks at me. And she goes, hey, do you, know, do you know my brother Steve? He's that guy that steals airplanes. He stole my lighter. And that was the whole. I was, she was just looking at me. I was like, uh, what? Uh-huh. <laughs> and then she said a couple other words we're not allowed to say. Which uh, was, oh, okay. Uh, I was like, okay. I was thought she was just trying to talk, and I was like, oh, no, she's not well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're talking to anybody. Like, I don't have a lighter. She's like, okay. And then she stopped talking to me. I was like, oh, that was quick. I'm just going to tell everybody they asked for anything. I don't have a lighter. <laughs> oh, I don't smoke, <laughs> no matter what they say. <laughs> that, that almost you're got under me arrest. Into... I don't smoke. <laughs> 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 that almost got me in, into a fight once, telling a guy I don't smoke. In Seattle, a homeless guy wanted to fight me. He came by. We got it on tape, too, because my buddy was shooting a documentary about the international comedy competition. This guy comes by, and he goes, uh, do you have a cigarette? I'm like, oh, man, I'm sorry, I don't smoke. And, and then he walks away. By, by the way, a weird thing to say, I'm sorry, I don't smoke. Yeah. But, like, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I don't smoke. He leaves, like, 30 seconds later, he comes back. Hey, do you have a cigarette? And I'm like, we already did this. <laughs> I, and that's what I said. I'm like, we already did this. Like, don't you remember me from 30? And he lost it. Yeah. He's like, I'll kill you. I got more money than Jeff Bezos. He went on a tangent. Uh, I believe him. He had a lot of money, maybe, but he didn't have a lighter. I'll tell you that much <laughs> right now. He was he was in need. Um, but yeah, we saw an impaled rat. I had a... What else did I do? Oh, I came from a trip. I did Indianapolis and Dayton, Ohio and Fort Wayne, the real hot spots. Ooh. Yeah. Indy, uh, no one talks about Indianapolis. They do stuff. Really? They have big stuff. They're doing the NBA All-Star game there, I think, this week or okay. next week. It's coming up. Like, so the whole airport, they put a giant basketball court in the airport. So I landed, and there's, like, a full-size basketball court in, like, the main concourse. And I was like, that's so cool. I was one of those things. I walked up to it, and I'm like, that's really cool. And then I realized that, like, uh, or I saw a bunch of people taking photos, and then I'm like, I'm not going to take a photo. And then halfway through, I'm like, I'm taking a video. <laughs> and then I took, I took a whole thing. Like, I got suckered into it. I'm like, I'm not better than this These at all. losers <laughs> don't have a 360 cam. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, that's who I am. I, I think about it, and then I'm like, yeah, I really do want that shot. Yeah. And then I took the shot. I love, I love like, being on my phone forever on the train, and then I look at the second I put it down, I look up, and everyone's on their phone. I'm like, these sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Get off your phones, people. Get <laughs> right back to my game. Uh, well, where yeah. was I? But no, yeah, I uh, had a great time in Indy, and uh, we went to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, me and Jeremiah oh, yeah. Coughlin. Yeah. That's a good time. That was a good t Well, you took a tour. They have tours, this guy with, like, no teeth. He was, like, a weird guy with teeth because he had two. The ones he had... So far, by the way, I have no idea what's going on with this guy's mouth. He said like five things, and I'm like, does he have teeth? Doesn't he? He does <laughs> and he doesn't. But the ones he has, it looks like it'd be better if he didn't. Okay. Like, so some of the gaps looked better than the what teeth he had. What are you hanging had. on to, bud? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just finish the job. <laughs> was, and he loved to talking. This guy was like, welcome to the Indian. And he wasn't even the tour guide. He was just the bus driver. And we, we got on the bus early, and he's just, he's talking so much. And then I'm like, oh, he's the tour guide. Nah, there's like a whole other guy, better teeth. Sure. That guy's the tour guide. And I bet you the driver just wants to be the tour guide, and he just doesn't know why he's being held back. You know, he's like, well, we know why. <laughs> yeah, well, we all know why. <laughs> you know, you got it's show business, man. You got to fix those pearly whites. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, we went to the Indy Motor Speedway, which I didn't know this. I felt really dumb, but very loudly in the gift shop, like five times. I'm like, oh hell yeah, NASCAR. Oh yeah, oh, let's get some NASCAR yeah. stuff. And I didn't know there's a difference. And I know you didn't know there's a difference. I, you would have been on my team. You know mm -hmm. as much about racing as I do. Mm -hmm. But after the fifth time, Jeremiah's like, dude, if you call a NASCAR again, I'm pretty sure one of these people is going to punch you in the face. <laughs> and, and I looked it up. So NASCAR is the one where it looks like a regular car, kind of. Mm -hmm. And then IndyCar is where they show a little ankle. Like where the wheels come out a little bit and they show a little, you know, whoo. Yeah, it's a different woo. car. Too, it's a different right? car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it's different from Formula One, which I guess they show even more ankle. I had a 
because uh, I brought this up on stage, and there was a girl with purple hair that looks like she's never watched NASCAR in her life, and she knew more about it than any of us did. Mm. Just because she grew up there, so she knows this stuff. Yeah. And she looks like she just listens to Death Cab for Cutie, you know? It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad plan. You're stuck in 2001? Yeah, why not? Uh, it's not a bad time to be stuck. It's not well, a... Before, what what month? It was still with <laughs> the first two quarters. First two quarters. <laughs> yeah, the third quarter of, of uh, 20, 2001, a little rough. Things got a little weird. But you know the upside? We got... <laughs> to uh, September 11th? Uh, no, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the upside of all of it is we got very uncomfortably patriotic. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So that's good. Oh, it was forced upon you. Yes. It was yeah. Super forced Bowl. patriotism. You had a Super Bowl experience in Indianapolis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, pretty much, dude. If you think about how patriotic we got after 9/11, remember that was the year that they did the football field sides American flag, mm -hmm. and then that's never gone away. Like we got oh, okay. two things from 9/11. One, we never got to take our shoes off again at the airport. Or no, that was a couple months later. Leave them on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got to, yeah. We had to take our shoes off at the airport, and we got giant flags uh, at the football game. It's pretty good. I can name a couple more things. But those, <laughs> are, those are the important ones. <laughs> those, I would say. Are, those are the ones I see. What are your takeaways from 9/11? <laughs> <laughs> shoes and flags, dude. <laughs> shoes and flags. That's what it meant to me. <laughs> Don't tell me how to experience 9/11. <laughs> Look, there might have been a couple more things, but the, <laughs> you know, government overreach and sure. yada yada, maybe got into a war we shouldn't have. Uh, but those big ass flags, mm. there's a lot of those. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had a good time in Indy. We stayed at one a fancy hotel in Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne's a weird town because there's nothing. There's not that much, but they sprinkle in some stuff. Mm -hmm. Like their downtown's cute, and then uh, and then the club which used to be Snickers, is now Summit Comedy Club. And I've never been there, but it's in a shopping center. It's a big shopping center, but every place is a bar. <laughs> I've never seen that before. They put their down, like, you know how a downtown would have bar, bar, bar? Yeah. They put it in a shopping center that looks like it should be a Marshalls, a TJ Maxx, and, like, a Jamba Juice. Were they that size, though? Were they, like, big size places? That were yes. Wow. They were big bars, and a lot of them. And then a comedy club at the end, and the most amount of parking I've ever seen. Like, that's what I said on stage. I'm like, you guys, you know, hey, we're keeping the bars here and make plenty of parking so these people can drive drunk home. <laughs> no one wants to walk home. I'm drunk. Hey, we're professional drivers here. I think they we're might known be. for our driving. We'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> they, okay. I had an audience member tell me that they had a mayor uh, that got a DUI, and then uh, he still got reelected. Sure. Yeah. So I'm that that shocked. means you're extra loved. You yeah. get a DUI, and they're like, "Hey, made it home," and then you know. What was the mayor of Toronto got what was his name? Ford. Tom what? Ford. Yeah. No, Tom Ford. I think he does scarves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Ford. Rob Ford. Rob Ford. Yeah, yeah he, he, he smoked crack, that guy. Uh -huh. And got elected. <laughs> and, yeah. Man, Toronto, what are you guys doing? You guys oh, are like... Look at me. <laughs> You're from there. I don't even know the guy. <laughs> I don't even know the guy. <laughs> You're a Torontoite. Uh, but, yeah. I liked, I liked the whole trip. I don't know. I don't know. Anything new in your world? Uh, Super Bowl was good. Yeah? Um... Did did that commercial? That was fun. Oh yeah, you shot a commercial yeah, for a furniture oh, company. Go? Really good. Nice. Yeah, I'll show you stuff after. Yeah. If you want to see it, yeah. I so you told us about this off off uh, cam I think a couple weeks ago, and my brain just went to like wacky furniture commercials. I got to show you all the ones they said no to. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> that's a big list. <laughs> I I remember there was a guy in L.A. who is like sleep free or something and he would just he would it was an annoying send off me like that's how every commercial ended was this wild old man trying to sell you mattresses by screaming high pitched <laughs> but yeah that's most that's most furniture commercials that's you, pretty bad this one's gonna be these are gonna be fun there's a couple of a uh, couple of fun ones in there a lot of ones that they were that was like you're not gonna like this one but <laughs> i like it <laughs> <laughs> they didn't tell me that they didn't want to be edgy these they the guy was like super into some of the stuff I was pitching him, like yeah. cold pitching him. And then when I came with the edgy stuff, he was like, "Yeah, it's not gonna do it." Yeah, we're we're, we're trying to sell these things. Yeah, we're trying to sell furniture. <laughs> but I slid one in that I think is gonna end up being really funny. Yeah. <laughs> but that did that. That was it. That was good. I like That's that. Good. I'm trying to think of what edgy thing you could do with furniture. Like you just like pull do the pull out couch and it's just dead people 
Like, it's like a place to hide a body. <laughs> wow. You're like, whoa. I don't know. I'm thinking dark. I'm thinking what would a furniture guy turn down? You're watching too many documentaries. Oh, that's what we've been watching. Yeah. With the stalkers and the whatnot. Oh, yeah. Lover Did stalker. Did yeah. you watch that? Did you still watch it last night? Oh, Jesus. Awesome. So wild. So what I, a... I, not to say anything about my intuition. No, oh, no. But as, as soon as they were like, then this happened, I was like, it's... The first one. Yes. I knew it immediately. Yeah, I was when like, she, it's gotta be. Yeah, mm-hmm. when she showed up. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. like, nope, it's her. Yeah. You yeah. said that too. Did you? Yeah. And I was yeah, like, I'm like well, no way. <laughs> it's her. Because like, how do you how do you leave everybody and then just start, you know? Because when they interviewed the other girl's family, by the way, I'm trying to talk about it without spoiling it for <laughs> same, anyone. Same. That, that's why I'm trying. But like, when the other girl goes off and disappears and is supposed to be harassing this person... Their family never went, oh, yeah, she does this. Like, no one just does that out of the blue. Mm-hmm. No one lives a regular life and then has a one-week relationship with somebody and then goes, you know, I'm going to stalk the hell out of you. You know? Like, nobody ever does that. But I like that. I like, I don't know. I, I like what listening to those types of, why would anyone date? Like, never date anybody. <laughs> you know? Meet in person. Don't, <laughs> don't meet online. Like, the odds of you meeting a lunatic is going to be so high. When they revealed that they were like, we found the IP address and it was one, some of the works at the police station, they showed the guy. Yeah. I was like, wow, I did not see that coming. No. And then where they did the quick butt, I was yeah. like, yo! I was like, <laughs> I'm like jumping up and down. I was like, I did it. <laughs> I, started, I started calling all NYPD. I'm like, guys, I'm available if you need me. <laughs> yeah, listen, as long as you show me the evidence in a documentary format, I think I can jump to the conclusion before the credits roll. Yeah. I think I can get to the end before we go whoosh. You know? <laughs> I would love to, I would... I think I would love to be a detective, but I know I don't have what it takes to, like, read people. Mm. You know? I think you would be better at it. Mm -hmm. Because you can look at somebody and go, I don't like them. Yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe. It's the intuition. I also like like the snooping aspect of it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Emma's (laughs) Emma's a bit of a snoop. (laughs) We'll stay. (laughs) Go to someone's house like someone's got a toe infection. (laughs) 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 Oh yeah, I saw the cream in the in the bathroom. Someone's got an infected toe. Also, it smells like corn chips all over this place. (laughs) That's my. (laughs) Remember when I clipped my nails and you're like, "What is that smell?" I think I have rotting toes. Sure. Yeah. (laughs) I can see why you don't want people washing them. (laughs) You don't even like to wash them. <laughs> I mean, I'm standing in the soapy water. Sure, but wasn't the that, job done? <laughs> yeah, wasn't that someone's joke? Someone had a joke. It was a lounge lizard act from like a million. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like standing in the soapy water. I'm standing in it, all right? <laughs> yeah. I remember watching that when my parents when I was a kid and they were like, that's not how you wash your feet. I was like, no. Yeah, <laughs> Even well, though it was 100%. How, how was are you supposed to wash your feet in the shower without tipping over and taking out the shower curtain? You're, you're telling me. Wait, whoa, I got to stand whoa, whoa. in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, think about this for a second before you say it. Go ahead. I'm, I'm curious. I'm, this is coming from someone who doesn't wash their feet no, in the shower. No, it sounds what it sounds like. <laughs> Go ahead. So I'm supposed to stand there and then lift a hoof. Yep. I'm probably cut my hand on my jagged toenails sure. while I do it, and then just put my leg back down and not fall. Who's doing that? So Zoltan doesn't scrub. Me? I don't. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How big is your shower that you can't, like, lean against a wall or put your arm... Do you have just a massive shower? No, it's a tub with walls. So you can't, like, lean up against the wall, lift a foot, and balance yourself? Yeah, what if it slips out from under me? I slip... I almost slip and fall almost every shower. Every how many times have you come in to pee and then you look in there just to like mess with me and then I'm like skip 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 like I just start it's like it's like whip, 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 whip. yeah it's like Scooby Doo before he takes off running that's, skip, 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 skip. that's me in the shower all the time so I I think that should be a shirt that you sell is what I'm supposed to lift my foot up and wash it please that's the most ridiculous thing I might have heard in a long time Mike do you have a loofah yeah. Do you have a loofah? No. I hear loo- I just got told that loofahs are no are no good either. See? Yeah, I mean, like I don't have a loofah. I have like a Persian man thing scrubbing you. <laughs> <laughs> she has a Persian white glove. I just I love it if that was the loofah. end of the sentence. Okay. I have a Persian. Anyway, let's hear about your feet. 
<laughs> yeah, you got that white glove you put on. Yeah, it's like a Persian loofah, and it was made by like an old grandmother from Iran. I enjoy washing my feet. It's a good you time. Like it? Yeah, it feels good. Getting in between, in between my little tootsies. My tootsies? <laughs> I'd like time. to soak my feet. Like okay. if we had a bucket... Mm-hmm. Of hot water that had some bubbles in it, I'd I'd dink my I'd dink my toes into that if we were watching the game or something. Put my hooves into that. Watch Didn't you soak. say you wanted to get me that as a gift so you could use it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know that gift we get our mothers every Christmas and yeah. they never use them. It's a little foot bath. <laughs> oh, three hundred dollar credit to uh, DraftKings. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Oh, look, a Undertaker T-shirt. I'll put it <laughs> put it with my other ones. <laughs> yeah, the I want that. I want to soak my tootsies, you know. I w- oh, you know we did do the other day. We went to a, a spa on Randall's Island, a mm. day spa. Ooh, all kinds of outdoor pools and stuff, mm. and they had all indoor like they had a foot foot scrub section where you could put your feet in the hot water and scrub them, and then mm. you take them out and put them in cold water back into hot water. It was cool. Ah, it was also cool that. sitting in the uh, the outdoor pool listening to a white woman. Uh, preach to a bunch of black women uh, what it's like to be involved in diversity inclusion in the workplace. Oh. And that was a tough one to listen to. You ever have secondhand <gasps> embarrassment so bad you're like, I think I just want to drown myself in the pool. It was really bad. Oh my god! Spa was great though. <laughs> Everything else but the mild racism was pretty good. Was she part of the spa? No. Oh, she was no. just she was just in the pool. Saw a bunch of black women. She's like, I can't wait to tell these people about how I'm. In, in the in- diversion and inclusivity of, of a Fortune 100 company. Oh, my God. That was bad, man. Oh. <laughs> that feeling you're feeling right now, but imagine that with no shirt on. I wanted to <laughs> stab this microphone through my face. It was bad. Just listening to that. The, oh. bra- the bragging and them seeing their, their all their faces were just like, uh-huh. And they oh, were being wow. polite. Oh. Couldn't get a word in. I bad. would love to see her try that on the subway. <laughs> 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 Listen, it's a different story when people are in robes and relaxed and like, well, we're just trying to have a nice afternoon. Yeah, but you're on the subway, everyone's just trying to get home, you're cold and you're kind of wet and something yeah. smells, but you don't know what smells. And then this person's going to come up. It's feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I forgot to put my shoes on. <laughs> I have stinky feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's the toenails. What's going on uh, under there? It could also be the fact you don't wash them. I'm just going to throw that out there. I don't think the toenails take, take the blame away from them. <laughs> you know what else I don't wash? The oh, middle God. of my back. My middle of my back doesn't stink. I can't reach back there. I got bad shoulders. Yeah, this is how much of my shoulders I can reach. Oh, sorry. I hit the mic. This is it. Right up here, the shoulders. All that back part. What am I supposed to do? Put a rag on a stick? You put your, You do this. You push your arm back a little bit. That's what I... <laughs> yeah, see, now you just... <laughs> Clearly, Mike doesn't do it either. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't wash my lower part of my or the middle part of my back. Dude, yeah. I've I've pulled back muscles taking my jacket off. Yeah. So like, there's no way I'm gonna like try to get the middle of my back. I think I pulled my. I think I slipped a disc sneezing the other day. In my <laughs> back. It's I'm falling apart, man. Yeah. When I shower, it's pits, uh, nuts and butt. Pits, no nuts. No. I don't have a face scrub in there. I've seen Zoltan in the shower, and it just looks like he's dancing. <laughs> like, Wait, he just... <laughs> that's where I do my work. All right? like, that's where I do all my thinking. He's just like... <laughs> Avoiding the water. He's just dancing with the water. Stop sneaking in and watching me in the shower. All right, that's all right roll I... the tape. <laughs> that's where I do my critical thinking. How many times have I come out of the shower and gone, I got a joke? Yeah. <laughs> And then I sit you down, and I'm like, no, here's the concept. And then boom, boom. And she's like, this is what you're doing in there? I'm like, yes, this is what I'm doing in there. <laughs> that happened to me the other day. I, was, I wrote a bit, and I, I just kept saying the punchline over and over because yes. I thought it was funny. And then Becca was like, she goes, why do you just keep saying that? And I, I was just like, I had a teacher in high school that she had two doctorates, which was cool, but yeah. she made us call her doctor, doctor. And I just kept saying, doctor, doctor, <laughs> doctor, doctor. And she just thought, and she was like, what do you keep saying that for? I don't want to forget this. This yeah, is a good line. It's a really line. funny line. <laughs> this is a good line. I the Well, that one wasn't in the shower. But in a moment, with a moment of frustration where I said, I don't I don't want to kill myself, but I do want to die naturally soon. Oh, yeah. That was not during a fight. <laughs> yeah, we, we were, were in a fight. And I and I said that. <laughs> Suicide remarks during a fight? <laughs> yeah. It was a pretty intense fight. Hey, and then you mind, was like, <laughs> but it was an easy one. Like, do you mind vacuuming before, uh, before yeah. you leave? I'm thinking about killing myself. <laughs> it's a real way to get out of it, too. I haven't vacuumed in years. <laughs> but it was one of those, like, we're in a heated fight. And then I say that line. And then I go, that's a good line. Because I started <laughs> laughing. Yeah, you started laughing, and I'm like, that's a good line. And then I quick, we stopped fighting, and I wrote it down. And it ended up being like a punchline and a therapy joke. That that's I how did. you know you're in a great relationship. Yeah, you yeah. Can. When when you can both realize 
All right, listen, we'll get back to this. Yeah. But you got to write that down. That's yeah. a good. That's from the heavens that came down, hit you in the head. Go ahead and write that down, loser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm still fighting. Speaking of suicide, that's a hell of a segue. Sure is. I put up into I, the other realm. Okay, never mind. <laughs> the, uh, suicide. That's a hell of a segue. <laughs> what if that was? I'm sorry, this is too dark. What if that's how I killed myself? Like speaking of suicide. <laughs> Just our Bud Dwyer right, <laughs> right off the podcast. Just a joker. I, uh, uh, we posted an old joke of mine where I talk about how expensive the vet is. Mm -hmm. And it, it's gotten a lot of views. I think the line in there was like, I took my cat to the vet and it was like a $500 bill. But it was, uh, I paid $30 for this cat. Like, you would never have that. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. at a mechanic, you're like, well, it's a $30,000 car. It'll be $150,000. <laughs> and you're like, no, I don't think that. It's like, an oil you... change. <laughs> yeah. And then I think I made another joke where I'm like, if a kid breaks his arm, that, like, you're never at the hospital. Like, well, we're just going to put him down. <laughs> you know, like, we got charged $30 for a nail clipping at the vet. Yeah. I was like, just take her feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be cheaper, right? <laughs> What are we doing? Thirty dollars? Like she's getting her clipped at home now. I can't believe I asked you to do that. Oh yeah, that. we do that at home. We did, we were like, oh yeah, just clip her toes. They asked, like, do you want us to do our, her toes while we're here? We're yeah. Like, yeah, sure, sure. And then we looked at the bill. It was thirty. Thirty bucks. Yeah. yeah. It took him eight seconds. Yeah, that's something to do at home. That's crazy. For that's sure. like our version of changing our own oil. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. those guys in the Midwest, like I don't pay for an oil change, and then they do it themselves, which is cool. But that's our version. It's like we'll clip the cat's toes. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. we'll we'll do our. We know how they like it. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I did this joke and i started receiving all these like messages from people that are angry these angry people and one of them said i don't appreciate your comments about veterinarians and i'm mm. like what the hell did i say about veterinarians you know and i was like it just costs a lot i don't think veterinarians are coming up with the price point i just think some veterinarians sell you a lot of things you don't need that's why everyone has a good vet you go yeah. to one, like, yeah, I like this guy. He doesn't upcharge me for things I don't need. Yeah. And then this other one's like, yeah, you really should do $10,000 worth of this. It's same with the mechanic. Same with the mechanic. Yeah. It doesn't mean, but anyway, long story short, a uh, couple of the messages were like, you know, uh, there's a lot of, there's high rates of suicide amongst the vet community. And they said this to me, like, I'm supposed to know that? How the hell am I supposed to know yeah. that a bunch of vets are going through, like, deep depression? And they have, like, this one person wrote this thing, like... Are you, are you sure they didn't think you said veteran? That's what I got confused. that makes sense. That I know about. I saw a poster on the subway about that on the way here. But this one person wrote... The first person, that's why I didn't get it. Uh, vets are struggling for their lives. And I was like, oh, this person's just talking about the military with no contact. Okay, yeah, I've heard of that. But they mean veterinarians. What'd you find? So I've always known that dentists have a high suicide rate. That's the really thing. apparently veterinarians are two times as likely what? than dentists. Dentists, because I think dentists do it a lot because they they're like in someone's mouth for the forty eighth time that day. They're like, oh, I just do mouths now, and then they like end it because they're like doctors, but they're not considered. You know what I mean? I think like, that's where the depression comes from. You go, go to all that school. school. Yep, and it's like yeah, it's crazy. You go to all that schooling, and at the end, people are like, "Doctor, he's a dentist," mm -hmm. and then they always put that catalyst. Even though I don't feel that way, I think you I think you dentists are heroes. Yeah, I've traveled abroad and I've seen some horrible teeth. I saw one in Indianapolis. <laughs> sure, I think you're doing amazing work. Yeah, I love a good dentist. But yeah, the. Uh, First of all, I think what it might be is I don't know if these groups are higher than others killing themselves. I think everyone's just killing themselves. I think suicide overall is very popular right now. And uh, but also to email to send me all these messages that vets are offing themselves. It's like, do you know? Do you have any idea of the suicide rate of comedians? No, like, but I it, think ours might be number one, and it might be from reading these moronic messages. Do you know what? Why? <laughs> it might. It might be. Do you know why veterinarians have such a huge suicide rate? Why? Compassion fatigue and mm. uh, easy access to euthanasia drugs. Whoa. Because they're constantly putting animals down. That's, that's got to be a tough life. Dude. You're, just, you're just killing pets. Yeah. That's, but gotta, I, that's, that's a lot. Wow. But also, yeah, I couldn't kill that rat. He yeah. told me to put that rat out of its misery because it was suffering. I'm like, I'm not, I can't do it. I'm not killing this thing. We had a mouse, tiny little mouse, and we were going to set traps. We're like, just let it be. It's cute. What is it, what is it eating? A crumb? <laughs> what is it eating? Like, we're going to check this. Come on. It's fine. It was so adorable, too. <laughs> it was so Big floppy ears. Whatever. <laughs> you guys left it? 
We, I mean, it wasn't just staring at us. It, we saw it, and we were like, oh, okay. eh, we found like some compassionate traps, but it's like, well, this, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> like, we don't check the traps. She would have ran out of the house. Yeah. yeah, I would have screamed. Yeah, she told me that. She goes, if I see this rat in our house, I'm going to scream like there's a murder, and I'm never coming back here again. I think the mouse is just as scared of the rats as we are. I was like, well, this guy's just trying to hide like we are from the rat. We're all just, we just build houses to stay away from rats in New York. Yeah. How, how are there still mice in the no city idea. when there's rats? No because idea. shouldn't the rats just like over dominate the mice population and mice are just out? I don't know. But the, uh, the suicide rate of veterinarians, like, that's horrible. Twice the size. And 80% of veterinarians suffer from depression. Same article. 80%? That's, that's a lot. That's wild. At, at some point, doesn't this bleed over into just all of us? Yeah, I think so. Because there's so many groups, like, watch out for this. Like, comedians, I don't know what our suicide rate is, but I know way too many uh, yeah. that have killed themselves. And then, uh, or if they didn't kill themselves, there was some sort of, like, unfortunate death where maybe by alcohol you kind of did, you know? And, yeah. It's called the sl sad clown paradox. Yeah, 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 everyone thinks we're all a bunch of sad clowns that are going to kill... You know what? Everyone's... Every group... I think Bill Burr said this once. He's like, there's depressed plumbers. Like, yeah. every group has... Like, if you narrow in on any group, you're like, man, those the percentage of people depressed in that group is high. I think we might all be depressed. I think that might be a touch of something. Doesn't that mean none of us are? And we're it's just life? But Yeah, I think we're at a point in life where... It, 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 we're afraid of nothing and we have nothing to strive for and other than just not being homeless yeah. and it seems harder than ever so we're sad yeah. and I'm, we're never we've never been further from uh having connections with people maybe we should go to the doc every time you go to the doctor or something ask them how they're doing yeah maybe if everyone just asked one question to the doctor like yeah how you been how you doing you feeling all right Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know what? I, okay, like maybe that'll change. Then change the doctor it. starts sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, shit. <laughs> I went to a sleep doctor the other day to get like to maybe have apnea, and he yawned in the middle. I was like, buddy, you can't yawn. <laughs> you can't be a sleep doctor and yawn during my consultation. Am I boring? Or are you not getting sleep? I'm, I'm talking to him now. I'm like, how's your sleep patterns been? It was weird. <laughs> it was I, so uh, weird. I shared a hotel room with a guy with the sleep apnea mask, mm. the CPAP. Very calming. I'm sure it is. You know how they have like whale noises to fall asleep to? They okay. should have a record. That fat. <laughs> no, it was. He was. <laughs> That's not what I meant. I just meant like the the relaxing noise of the CPAP machine just yeah. going. Oh, is that what it sounds like? It just constantly. It was kind of like wow. that, and then it was just a hum of the machine too. And it was it was a nice consistency to it. It's pretty cool. You know, instead of it just being a dead still hotel room with another human in there, which I never like. I, I need the hum of the AC or a CPAP machine. I'd listen to that mm -hmm. instead of the whales. Anything that David Attenborough's produced, I'm a big fan of listening to that at night. His voice, mm -hmm. oh yeah, put you right to bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a Brit, mm, mm -hmm. an old Brit. Yeah, you know, just talking about leaves and such. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more about the leaves, David. <laughs> 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 he just not all snowflakes are a little bit different. Oh. <laughs> and now the migrating cheat. Oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> I love animal stuff. That puts me right out. Or murder. Because they all just like, <laughs> like either animal stuff or a murder documentary. Or are we watching cold case files before mm -hmm. we fell asleep? And it's just like some detective, like, yeah, we just didn't know what was going to happen. And then they hit the piano. Dun, 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 dun. And then, ah, sound, <laughs> you know? It's not like you're watching Phantom of the Opera. That's the way they shoot it. And then DNA. I love it because all the cold case files, they all just end with, and then we had DNA. And then we it was Jim. It's been Jim the whole <laughs> it was time. Jim. <laughs> it's Jim the whole time. Every single time. He was getting away with it because we didn't have DNA in the 80s, and now we do. Get over here, Jim. Get into prison. Isn't yeah. it crazy how you can get proved that you're innocent through DNA, but they're like, it still took him three months to get him out of jail? 
It's like it, no, that day test results are in. Here's the here's the key. Yeah, like there's that's crazy to me. It's it's cruel. It's really gross. yeah. Like you don't. There's no judge that you could get to him quick and go, hey, we just found out this guy has been in prison for X amount of years. He wasn't supposed to be in there at all. Declared innocent. Declared innocent. But he still has to go through the process. Yeah, but like some guy in a robe's gonna go. All right, Timothy. <laughs> we gotta let you out. Did you see that the um, Innocence Project is taking up Scott Peterson's case? The, um, Scott Peterson killed his uh, wife, pregnant wife. Yeah, yeah. And this Innocence Project is like they're like a huge publicly like not publicly, I've heard of privately the innocence. funded project yeah. to get innocent people out of jail, and they're they only going... take a certain number of cases, and they're taking on his case. Wow, which is like they must have some sort of crazy evidence that says that he didn't do it, which is crazy. Wow. He was also around the era when everyone was proven guilty through Nancy Grace. <laughs> you know? Did you ever watch Nancy Grace? Mm -hmm. She's a mean lady with a horrible haircut. And she had her fiance, she has a backstory of a villain, which her fiance was murdered. Mm -hmm. And so now she's just mean to everybody. And, uh, and in the mid 2000s, she had a TV show where everyone that would go missing, she would just be like, you're in Vandersloot. Stop. <laughs> Scott Peterson, we're supposed to believe he was having Froyo on a Sunday? <laughs> and then everyone's like, yeah, that guy did it. And maybe he did do it, but the, uh, my point is, like, the court of public opinion listening to this god-awful, yeah. despicable person, you're like, yeah, I think he did do it based on this mean lady with a horrible haircut. Top, the tot mom. They yeah. Calling, uh, what's that, Casey? Uh, oh, yeah, what's it was, name? you know, the short haircut with the angles? Mm -hmm. Like, the whole thing just looks sharp. They look like an anime. <laughs> character come to life and you're like oh, I mean business let me back out my Hyundai minivan now and they all come in all straight <laughs> it always looked like one of the angles was going to hit him in the eye you know if they if they cut it wrong you know they just look just like mean people and then two-toned hair remember two-toned hair oh, yeah. oh can we not go back to that because I know style is repeating itself and we're creeping up we're creeping up on 07 08 when we had weird sharp hair and two-toned blonde on the top jet black underneath it's like a fork in the road. Are we going to heaven or are we going to hell? And we got to decide <laughs> via the back of your skull. I'm still talking. Sorry, I was, looking, <laughs> I was looking to see if she ever apologized for anything. And I Nancy can't find Grace? It. Nancy Grace apology doesn't exist. No, remember when she interviewed uh, the girl that was kidnapped by the cult? Uh, very famous case. She was kidnapped out of her house in Utah. And uh, she survived. And, but they had her for like two years. Remember that? Lori Vallow? That no. One? Ah. She performed at a college I also did. She was like the next week. Uh, performed is probably not the right word. Nancy Grace or the girl that got no, kidnapped? No, no, no. The girl that got kidnapped. She's a comic? No, no, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think performed is the wrong word. Yeah, I think yeah. it was more spoken word. <laughs> I think it was more of a speech than I don't know if it was you that punch agent. Yeah, I just know they had a poster. If you want, if you want Zoltan, you gotta take my former co leader. I don't know why Trump is your agent, but I, I actually I don't know. I, I would love Trump as my agent. Like he would just be, I I think he would get me deals and then I wouldn't have to do the shows. Like, <laughs> Trump would somehow get me paid before the show. Be like Zoltan's not coming. Keeping the money, and then <laughs> and I would never have to go do anything. But uh, uh, no, she uh, she was kidnapped. We'll figure out her name. But she was kidnapped in Utah by the. Uh, she was from like a Mormon family, or L I think she was an LDS. Oh, Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Smart. Smart. Yeah, mm. there you go. She's kidnapped. Remember we watched yeah. her story. She's kidnapped by that lunatic, and they held her for like uh, a while, a long time. Mm. And then she went on. You know, she was speaking at colleges. I think she put out a book. But there's that Netflix famous special. Yeah, all Netflix, the all the stuff. <laughs> but there was a, an interview she did with Nancy Grace right after she got, uh, you know, found, freed, whatever. And Nancy Grace came at this girl hard going, you know, there, you had opportunities to escape. Why didn't you escape? And I guess she had said before, listen, I'm not going to get into the details of my capture, probably because I was a 14 year old girl and I'm still very young yeah. and I'm trying to understand the abuse that just happened to me for however long. And Nancy kept kept picking at her because she's got a mean haircut. She's a mean woman. Mm -hmm. Kept picking at this poor Elizabeth Smart. And then Elizabeth Smart like clapped back. Is that what the kids are saying? <laughs> Gave her I a think little. That's a good phrase. I think it's a good phrase. Yeah. Clap back on her. I forget what she said. She's probably like, ah, your vagina has teeth, Nancy. I forget what she said. <laughs> but she said something mean. And then uh, it was a good, it was a good one, you know? I want to watch that. 
I love when people like that get t- taken down. I love down. it. Nancy was also re- spoken back to in a good mm. way. I yes, love it. I love a good. Uh, I love a good uh, Ben. Uh, what's that guy's name? Ben. Who cares? Doesn't matter. I love when people. <laughs> I love when people smug people get told off. Yeah, get told off because yeah. she was mean to everyone. She would bring on guests and like uh, other detectives or something, and then crap on them. Be like, oh, we have a special guest, uh, special prosecutor, S- S- Timmy Steves or whatever. Probably a better name than that. And then be like, what's your opinion on this case? And then he'd give his opinion on the case. Be like, D- don't come at me with that, Timmy. He clearly murdered this woman, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, why would you invite people to be mean to them on your program? Yeah. It's, it was like a prank show, but it wasn't a prank show. <laughs> the prank is on yeah. her the whole time. <laughs> Nothing, yeah. No one's ever been murdered. No one's ever been <laughs> Well, I think the biggest twist was she killed all these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nancy's out there killing people with her sharp hair and then going on going, I think Scott Peterson did it. I can't. I would love to see if Scott Peterson didn't do it. That'd be crazy. I don't yeah. even remember the story other than it was his wife was pregnant. And then would they go to Mexico? He went fishing the same time she went disappearing. So it was uh-huh. like pretty. She went disappearing. She went disappearing on us. <laughs> they found her body. You know, that's a great question. I don't know. I don't know if they did. But it was a big case in the mid-2000s. Oh, wow. I remember that. I think, uh, didn't they send Dog the Bounty Hunter to go get him? Or was that Jorn van der Schloot? That was the other. Do you know van der Schloot's, like, brother, I think, is an is a agent in the comedy world? You're kidding. No. Oh. Wait, I've talked to that guy. I had a meeting with that guy. He's with related. the same related. last n- yeah, name. Yeah, it's like cousin, brother, something going on, yeah. Mm. They are related. I met that guy. He was nice. Well, the guy I talked to, you know, you can be related to a killer and not be a killer. You can no. still be a decent. Don't you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> not Nancy Grace. The apple don't fall far from the battle axe. <laughs> like, you know, like, what are you yelling about? Um, did we have anything else? Did you have something? Mm, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> I'm glad you brought up my feet. Because I, I, I don't think we had talked about that yet. And I, I was like, I do. How do we fix this? I, I well, the, my feet. I don't know the the way you treat them. I don't want to wash them. They're all the way down there. Right, and that's what I'm asking. How do we fix that? <laughs> Maybe a stick or something. A stick with so a soft. So it's not the feet. You're not like ticklish. No. You just don't like the act of. They're so lifting far away. Your leg up. Like how much do you, how do you really walk? Do you just drag your feet? Do you, <laughs> do you army crawl everywhere? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how I walk? <laughs> you leave wet prints everywhere you go. Oh, I have sweaty feet. I, yeah. have, I have feet like a damn salamander, dude. Like, everywhere I walk, I have these, like, sweaty... I remember one of your early apartments had black tile, and then you would just laugh. I'd be in... So- I'd sweat through my socks. Sure. And then... And, and, and not even working out. I just woke up, put some socks on, and then I, I walk upstairs, and she'd be like, oh, my God, look, and she'd point down, and my little wet foot marks are just going across the black tile. I, I, I guess sweat Sweaty feet. Uh, oh, you know, it's actually a good product. They're, they're not a promotional, but um, like the people that make like fresh balls. Yeah. They make a thing called fresh feet. And they use. And it's a spray. I've actually, because between every, when the seasons change, my yeah. feet start to smell, but only like right for like a week or two. <laughs> Some reason when hot to cold, cold to hot, my feet go, not today, guy. <laughs> we're fine. We're just going to, we're just going to push everything out that we've been holding on to all season. <laughs> Your feet are like seasonal fruit. Yeah. You're like, ah, oh, dude, we can't get pluots in this winter. Yeah. Yeah, plant, it's a plantain. Like, it's good when it's hard, it's cool when it's soft, but then by the time it gets too mushy, you no, know, it's just going to start stinking. What season are you not good for Mike's feet? It's usually hot to cold. So, like, when, okay. like fall to winter, you know, that's when I start to get a little bit... Things get a little funky, but I have a spray that actually Manscaped makes. Manscaped makes a they foot make a spray. spray, and it's it's incredible. It works like a charm. Okay, I, I go all day stomping around, double socks, whatever. No smell. That's good. This yeah. is not sponsored. Not sponsored. No, it's not content. sponsored, but that's all right. <laughs> but I've I used to. It. I used to. I used the grooming guru for Manscaped. Maybe I could get some foot spray. Mm-hmm. I have no contacts there anymore, but San Diego company. Uh, that's yeah. I I don't know if my feet stink. But they, they, the nails don't smell good. I don't think the whole foot's been compromised. Sure. It's just the fingernails. Well, then hopefully the, the smell in the nails will they'll rot off and you'll lose your toes and you won't have to worry about it ever again. No? Is that, that a solution? Or? Is, that, is that a possibility? <laughs> probably. Your feet can just rot. You probably rot. get an infection on your toe and they got to take it off. 
See, I'm scaring him I into like doing that. it. Yeah, I'm scaring like him into cleaning his feet. This is I what like Emma what likes. You're doing here, yeah, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Emma loves to like find a problem and then Google it and go. I mean, they're probably gonna have to chop your foot off. <laughs> and you're like, wait, what? You don't have to do that. My feet just stick. Uh huh. I don't want to wash my feet. Like, isn't it enough that it's in the soapy water? I know it's a joke from a comedian, but like, also, isn't that enough? Are you down there scrubbing your feet? I scrub my feet. Yeah. Really? With my Persian loofah. <laughs> I might I might borrow that. I might borrow that white glove running up my crack. See, how, <laughs> see, how, <laughs> see if we can't dingy up this white glove. <laughs> Where's my white glove? Well, it's still there, but still one there. of those things isn't correct anymore. <laughs> Dinge. <laughs> it's got a little dinge on it. <laughs> I think, uh, what are we at, an hour? Uh, yeah, Literally just at an hour, yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Did you have something to add to the foot conversation? I saw you Googling. Oh, uh, I was looking to see what it would take to um, have your toe amputated, but nothing's <laughs> coming up about dirty nails. I think it's so type 2 diabetes. It is, yeah. actually. <laughs> diabetes, you lose the feet. What about gout? Gout just hurts. Gout is uh. painful in your heel. Uh. So I've heard. And your big toe. Not that I've ever had it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but a bad. Uh, Sounds a ba- like he's had it. I yeah, have. it does. Oh, I, sound yeah. like he's had yeah. a lot of Wendy's, Mike. <laughs> yeah, they call it the King's disease. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because uh, I'm, I'm a king. <laughs> is what I take from that. And not anything to do with my amount of beef I eat. <laughs> uh, nail salon in Florida had to pay $1.7 million after a dirty man- a pedicure caused somebody to have to lo- get their toe amputated. Oh, my oh they got some flesh eating disease or something. something but that's it my started worst from the nightmare. toes. Yeah. That stuff's not clean. No. Yeah, dirty nail salon. Yeah, because they don't do. Like at the barber shop, they always soak that stuff in that barber side stuff. Mm. I don't think they do that at these uh, foot and hoof places. <laughs> <laughs> I like that some places they'll use new stuff every time. Yeah. Or like they'll send it off to be cleaned and then they'll have come back packaged. Mm. I like the, there the, you the go. package places. Yeah, it should be open like uh, when you go to the dentist and they open a brand new yeah, 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 exactly. hook to mm-hmm. get the plaque. Anyway, uh, that's the show for this week. Uh, don't forget to go to ZoltanComedy.com and see my tour schedule. New dates added all the time. This week, well, it will be by the time this comes out, I will be in Port Charlotte and then coming up on Cleveland and uh, Toledo and Tampa and a bunch of other places, Washington, D.C. Uh, go to ZoltanComedy.com. Safe Journal, SafeJournal.co, 25% off. Zoltan at checkout. Any final words? Wash your feet. <laughs> Wash your feet, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye. Trekking heavier, traveling light. There's one thing that's right wherever I go. 